Hello there, YouTubers. It's Professor Vivian Alice here with a little report on a really quite remarkable uh, incident that happened uh, just a couple of days ago. Extraordinary. I was attending a seminar which was organized by uh, numerous uh, luminaries in the petrochemical industries. Now, this is, normal, as you could imagine, out of my normal remit. And that's quite extraordinary. My area of excellence, if you like, is uh, communication both oral and written, mainly oral. I'm very keen on that. And what I was there for was to um, facilitate a, a greater understanding between many disparate groups from all over the world. But there was a, a, me a meeting of a, a, a petrochemical uh, engineers, scientists, environmentalists, all sorts of different chaps and, and ladies were there. Oh, we had a lovely lunch. It was delicious. Little cutlets of lamb seared very briefly in a very hot pan with a little bit of mustard sprinkled on the top. The discussion was around the whole area of peak oil. A fascinating thing to discover when one really knows very little about it. It's a big debate going on at the moment, as you may or may not be aware, uh, of when the Earth, Mother Earth, produces the maximum amount of her black blood, do you think Mother Earth will release her precious fluids in the abundance that she has done thus far uh, for the human race to consume willy-nilly? Now, being a cyclist myself, I've never been a great one for consuming oil, <laughs> but I've noticed that there are quite a lot of vehicles on Her Majesty's Highway which use an extraordinary amount. Not that I pass judgment on them at all. It's all totally beyond me. Anyway, that's besides the point. What was discussed here was the two conflicting conspiracy theories. Not one. It's not like the Kennedy assassination, where there was either one gunman or five. That was very simple to choose. This one has got two completely conflicting conspiracy theories that are totally contradictory. In the mid-1970s, just post the... Uh, huge oil price hike that happened in the early 1970s, which caused enormous social upheaval and, and an enormous rise in the cost of petrol. In this country, we had the three-day week. Post this event, the uh, oil companies got together because they, they were revealing their supplies of oil to their uh, respective governments when they discovered them. So say they discovered a huge new oil field off the coast of Alaska. Uh, Texaco, or one of those companies owned by George W. Bush, would discover this oil. There was a, a form of taxation that was imposed upon them, which uh, 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 required them to reveal the, uh, the quantity of oil they discovered and the future possible taxation. They don't pay the tax there and then, they had to pay the tax in the future. So, that was all marvellous. So what they did was they stopped telling people that they discovered oil. They kept it to themselves, which means no one now knows the, the amount of oil deposit. This is one conspiracy theory. And therefore, they can say, we're running out of oil. Oops, the price has gone up. Oops, oh dear, there's no more oil left. We'll have to charge $150 for a barrel. Quite extraordinary. Now, I don't know if you know this, but in the last year or so, the price of oil has doubled and then doubled again. Well, it was just about to double again. And some people uh, at this conference were saying to me, uh, there's plenty of oil, darling. No, we won't run out for another thousand years. That's not the problem. What they're doing is they're just making more money out of it. Gorgeous. So that particular conspiracy theory does hold quite a lot of water, or possibly, I should say, quite a lot of oil. Extraordinary. The other conspiracy theory is the one that we're all aware of, i.e. the oil actually is running out. And in which case, what is going to happen to the world we know and love so much? You know, you could say, well, everybody can ride bicycles. Well, that's all well and good. The rich can ride on their horses. Oh, hardy ha. Let me just remind you of a few things. Cars only use a very small fraction of the amount of uh, fossil fuels that we extract on the ground each year. The vast majority is used in aeroplanes and shipping. And there's a lot of ships on the sea, an enormous amount of shipping going on, and it carries the goods and services. Well, it doesn't carry the services, that would be quite absurd. But it carries the goods that we all consume so willy-nilly in our discount clothing stores. Now, just suppose the price of oil quintuples in the next six months, which it could possibly do, then your pair of socks that presently cost you 14p from Primark in the high street will suddenly cost 40 pounds. Peak oil. You may or may not be able to drive to the shops. That's perfectly irrelevant. But the pair of socks you want, or the food you require to buy, the lovely mangoes that have been shipped here from uh, far away, will suddenly cost so much that you will be eating grass and potatoes. So that is rather alarming. So 
Neither particular conspiracy theory is very heartwarming. They're both rather worrying. Either we really are running out of oil and therefore the shit is going to hit the fan, or we're not running out of oil and the oil company is going to get yet more money from us. Either way, there's that lovely phrase that some of my students have used, uh, uh, you've grabbed the shitty end of the stick. Well, this particular stick is well and truly covered in shit from end to end. That said, that's all I've really got time to tell you at the moment about peak oil. I think um, we should all be bricking it. And uh, <laughs> who knows what's going to happen. But I'm very glad I've got my bicycle with a bell and a basket on the front. And I ride it along the, uh, the, the high street in Oxford and I'm very, very happy as long as a bus doesn't knock me over. I'm waffling now. As some of my students have said, Professor, please don't waffle. It's very, very tedious. So I shall toodle pet now. But if you have been watching, uh, thank you so much. My name is uh, Regis Professor Vivian Arras.